they thought I was one of them. They were holding my hand, hugging me, kissing me, calling me sister. They invited me inside of their home and sat me down on their mother's bed. And then they realized I couldn't understand them. The languages that we were speaking, the language that I grew up speaking, shares a root with the language that they were speaking to me. But just because you can speak Spanish doesn't mean you can speak French. Eventually, they figured out that I was from this land far away called America. So what was I, this American girl, doing in a village in the foothills of the Himalayas, helping tribal villagers learn how to grow more food? Well, see, the thing is, these tribal villagers weren't always farmers. Their grandparents were actually forest-dwelling people but then the forests were cut down for a number of reasons, but the area is now covered with mines and power plants. For compensation, they were given land to farm, but they didn't know how to farm. So this organization called the Ban Vasi Seva Ashram, a nonprofit organization with Gandhian principles, has been helping them for over 50 years figure out how to grow food and support themselves. Unfortunately, for those same past 50 years, what started out as a harmless dry spell has turned into a long-lasting drought. Now, rain, as we all know, and water is very important to be able to grow food, as we know here in California and especially here in Salinas. But it's even more important when your food is rain-pollinated. Now, pollination is essentially the process um, that's used to, or has essentially how plants are fertilized so they can grow into more plants. And we normally know about pollination through wind or pollination through insects like bees. But especially in this village, their rice, their paddy fields were pollinated by rain. So they needed the monsoons coming in to be able to actually fertilize the, the paddy. So not only were these people unable to grow their own food, they were also unable to grow the crop that was essentially their cash crop. That was the crop that they used to sell to others and be able to get more money. So I was there with this organization called the World Bee Project. And the World Bee Project is essentially using bees as a means to improve livelihoods everywhere. Train the farmers, equip them with bees. A few short months later after my role in the project was complete, I found myself back here in California. And the reverse culture shock was real. The struggle that these people had gone through just to grow food, to eat food, was as tangible to me as the warmth of that young mother's hand as she pulled me into her bedroom and called me sister. Except now I was in Los Angeles and I was in a supermarket with glossy, perfect food and people that were throwing food away because they just didn't want it anymore. Or because they weren't sure and it might have gone bad. And I came to realize that cultures have foods, but there's also a food culture. That is how we perceive food. I've been living abroad for the past three years, and I came to realize one of my favorite things of going to a new country was eating, right? That's one of the best place, one of the best ways you can figure out how the people there really live. In India, it's common to go to an open market and buy your fruits and vegetables directly from the farmer. In Sweden, it was quite common to have a small plot of land dedicated to your community so you could grow food yourself. And people there which m- were much more connected with the food that they were eating because they were growing it. And when I came back to LA, I realized that that connection was broken. Sure, it's cool to go to a farmer's market. You see locally grown and farm to table popping up everywhere. 
But I think one of the most statistically relevant <laughs> uh, pieces of evidence for how disconnected we are with our food here is the fact that 50% of the produce that is grown here in the US is wasted. Think of all the water, the nutrients, the energy that goes into producing and distributing that food. 50%, 50% of that food is wasted. So that got me thinking that we have very simple ways of reducing waste, right? You have the reduce, reuse, recycle, the three R's of how to reduce waste and trash in this world. And I think we could use those same three principles and apply them to food and food waste. Just starting off with point number one of reduce. There's two sides of the same coin, which is become a bit more aware of the food that you're buying. There's actually the new regulation that's coming out um, with exp expiration dates. Those dates that are stamped onto your food don't mean actually too much. So just to become a bit more aware and a bit more connected with the food that you can actually eat. And the second one, which is pretty easy, and I'm sure a lot of us do it, is just make a shopping list. And make sure that the food that you put on that shopping list is food that you could actually realistically see yourself finishing. Takes us to step number two. So first was reduce, the second is reuse. And that's as simple as eat your leftovers, right? If you think you're not able to finish something, try throwing it in the freezer. Or turn your stale bread into croutons. You can get creative. And point number three, so we have reduce, reuse, and the last one is recycle. If worse comes to worst, compost. Doesn't have to be too fancy. I have an old, massive yogurt tub next to my sink. And when I'm done chopping my veggies and the little bits left over, toss them in the tub. There's a little bit of extra scraps on my plate. Put it in the tub. And he's put in the compost bin afterwards. So it doesn't have to be very complicated. And as cliche as it sounds, these really small changes can actually make a really big difference. So now checking back in with our, our tribal villagers in the Himalayas, 18 months later, kids were in school. They were building a hospital. And their crop yields had actually increased by up to 30% because of the program. There's so much that goes into food. And if we're just able to spread it out a little bit more evenly around the world, I think we can change the world. Thank you.